Welcome to Spotlight, where we look at companies and products that have caught our eye. Today, we're looking at Embraer Defense. The Brazilian company has been in action for more than 50 years, producing commercial airliners, executive jets, and a range of defense equipment for land, sea, space, and cyber, including airborne early warning and control command and control centers, radars, and ISR systems. But of course, it's the aircraft that we know best. And we're looking at two of those today. The light attack aircraft, the Super Tucano A29, and the new 21st century multi-mission transport aircraft, the C390 Millennium. And we're joined now by Simon Johns, the Vice President of Business Development for Europe and North Africa, and Caritano Spoldario Neto, the Vice President of Business Development, Middle East, Asia, East and Southern Africa. So Simon, let me start with you and the A29, now in operation with 15 air forces, including the USAF. So why is it proving to be so successful? I think there are three elements um, to the Super Tucano that we need to understand. And the first is that it was developed really as a, a response to a demanding set of requirements from the Brazilian Air Force. And those requirements uh, reflected the operational need at the time uh, and demanded multi-mission capabilities. Uh, and this was also combined with the ability to operate from rugged and some pretty remote locations uh, where there was no intensive ground support. And therefore, you know, the design of the aircraft has been um, really steeped in reliability and generated a rugged platform that can operate pretty much anywhere uh, and, and deliver some of the attributes that the aircraft is most renowned for. I think the second element is that Embraer has always worked hard to keep the platform relevant and up to date with advances in system technology. And these can include um, the very latest in weapon systems. Um, it's equipped with fourth generation avionics. It's got the latest in self protection systems and, and electro optical infrared systems, all equipped with laser designators uh, and other night vision systems. You add to that the secure communications and the data link package, and you've got a, a sophisticated, reliable, modern aircraft, um, f fully able to operate as part of a networked environment. And I think those two factors are why the aircraft has excelled continuously in combat on operations. And those have ranged from surveillance operations in the Amazonian jungle, counter narcotics operations in the Dominican Republic, and perhaps most notably, um, the counterinsurgency operations in Afghanistan, Africa, and Colombia. Um, the final part of the answer, I think, is all to do with, um, with affordability. Uh, the aircraft is inexpensive to procure, and boasts very low operating costs and extremely high availability, which is um, which is well above 90 percent. And so therefore, for many air forces, it becomes a natural selection. It's a combination of affordable multi-mission 21st century capabilities, and it's a natural choice for a number of these air forces. Well, in the introduction, I mentioned airlift and very relevant for today's military. Katano, can you tell me about the trends for this segment? <laughs> I think what we've been observing on the transport military transport market is that air forces and governments worldwide have been facing um, some pressure with regards to their budgets. And especially with the pandemic situation we've all been through in the last two years, this has been exacerbated. And so we see that air forces, uh, military forces and governments worldwide, they started to pay attention to aircraft that can provide multi-mission capability, uh, better efficiency in delivering the missions that they are required um, to deliver, uh, especially less downturn times. So that's where the C390 uh, finds it, its spot in the market. Embraer, together with the uh, Brazilian Air Force, the launch customer of the C390 aircraft, has taken into consideration such factors and has designed an airplane that's truly multi-mission, meaning that air forces worldwide can, uh, can uh, take the benefit of using a single platform in less quantity of aircraft to perform the wide range of transport missions they need to perform uh, for, for complying with their duties. For example, medical evacuation, transport of uh, cargo, transport of military or hardware like uh, vehicles or even helicopters, um, paratroopers, uh, capability, air-to-air -air refueling, among other missions. So Simon, it's more than just being about the platforms, isn't it? Embraer Defence are working on a number of different things, so tell us about that. 
Sure, and I think it's it's an important point. I mean, Embraer has uh, certainly diversified its portfolio over recent years, and uh, and that's in response to the nature of conflict and defence requirements evolving. Uh, and we've invested a lot of a lot of time and money in, into information systems, and now offer several defence systems that I think um, match um, the aircraft platform um, with other systems and also on the ground. So, if I sort of turn quickly to to the sort of the the, uh, the aviation segment, um, we've partnered with Elta, um, where we are uh, using one of their excellent um, EASA radars mounted on top of the Praetor 600 executive jet um, to offer a uh, an affordable, true sovereign uh, airborne early warning capability to to customers uh, who might not previously been able either to afford it um, or been able to control it. They may have had to subscribe to uh, um, to other organisations where uh, ownership is shared, uh, and we think this is a great opportunity to provide um, air forces and governments um, with a sovereign asset that they can control and and use as they see fit. So, what about the future? What are the projects that you see coming? What can you share with us? Again, I think it's a really interesting question because we were at that point now where um, you know, there is a there is a change in uh, in the way that you know, as as a as as a sort of a global community we're looking at sustainability and that's a very important uh, issue for Embraer. Uh, and recently, we signed a memorandum of understanding with the Brazilian Air Force um, to study the potential development of a light utility aircraft, which we've called Stout. Um, and that's going to be powered by a hybrid electric propulsion system. Uh, and essentially what we are doing is we're, 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 we're adapting a number of the, um, I guess, the sustainability challenges that we've been able to look at in the commercial and the executive, exe, executive aviation segment and bring those across into the defence segment as well. OK, Satana, how do you see these environmental goals actually being met by Embraer? The company is committed to achieving neutral operations by 2040. Our priority is to have strategic partners and invest in research and development in the search for solutions such as electrification and sustainable aviation so that we have the necessary innovations for this scenario. In this sense, Embraer has the following initiatives currently undergoing. The first eVTOL 100% electric aircraft planned for 2026. In August, Embraer also had the first test flight of the electric demonstrator. Embraer already has executive aircraft that's been using sustainable aviation fuels in Florida and is working to expand this solution. And additionally, the company is also looking at modern turboprop solutions and hydrogen propulsion. Well, gents, it's been a great story. And we've been seeing the aircraft on the screens as you've been talking, but will we see them for real at the air show? Yes, sure. You will see us uh, with the full team and the full line of products at the Dubai Air Show. Absolutely fantastic. Well, we look forward to seeing them and seeing you at the show as well. So thank you for joining us. Goodbye.